Something's wrong with the baby's heart. We're going into the unknown here. A thousand miles, it's hard to hear you through the static, searching for something to say. Boston, home to three of America's greatest hospitals, Mass General, the Brigham, and Children's. These are the stories of the men and women who work in them. I've never seen a guy as sophomore nurses than you on rounds. Rob, are you asking me out in front of this camera? Trauma coming in as a male who was involved in a work-related accident who may have internal bleeding. I see you in room two on your arrival. I need to catch my breath. Like ran from the OR. The patient sustained a trauma to his chest and his abdomen. And my chief resident just called me that he's uh, actually coding. They're doing chest compressions, CPR. That's okay. The side, please. If we can bring him back, he'll be emergently taken to the operating room. We'll have to wait and see. Here he is. I've always been in the front lines. I was a EMT. I was a firefighter. I'm in the um, Army Reserve Medical Corps. You'll find my EMS awake, alert, oriented, complaining of uh, chest, abdominal, and uh, pelvic pain. So in flight, developed a uh, ventricular rhythm without pulses. Any bleeding that you see anywhere throughout his abdomen, but no other obvious bleeding. We close? See if there's a pulse in the room. Okay, okay, stop. There, is there a pulse? No pulse. Do we have any blood? Can we get blood? I put myself through college and medical school. My loans are up to almost $300,000. First unit of blood's going in, Deb. Continue so CPR. I would do it again in a second. I would volunteer to do this. Stop and see what the rhythm is. OK, can we just okay. hold compression, please? Do we have a pulse? I don't feel a pulse. No All pulse. All right, resume compressions. This is last chance. All right, can we have an ED or economy train, please? We open his chest to try to give him the best chance of getting down to the operating room. All the way down, all the way down. His chances of survival right now are uh, very poor, but we gotta give him that chance. I'm wondering how fast I can get his belly. I'm thinking like three minutes. I don't think anybody really knows what it is to be a surgeon uh, until they actually get there. I think I was kind of lucky that I found something that I liked, and now that I do it, I'm even luckier that I still like it. Hello, sir. Oh. Dave Berger. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm nervous. <laughs> I don't blame you. I hear you have a hernia. Is that true? Yes, it is. A patient comes to see me in the office. I walk in the room. I have about 20 or 30 seconds to reassure that patient that I'm actually a half-decent guy and that I know what I'm doing. Good to see you again. Sorry to see you. Yeah, well, I understand it's that. It's coming in for a different body part. <laughs> this is a different you don't want to make a habit of it. Because if you come in for different body parts all the time, you'll be out of body parts. <laughs> that first impression is a big deal because you as the patient are going to lie down on a table and let me take a knife to you. So I hear you have a hernia, is it true? Oh, it's very true. Yeah, how long do you think you've known you had a hernia? Four months, maybe. Four months. You're in the right hands, I think. Well, I promise I know how to fix a hernia. How's that? Um, you're welcome. That's a good start. Yeah. I Googled you. You Googled me. I Googled I you when I was liking it. You Googled me. <laughs> I've been an attending surgeon for 12 years, I think. And I have done almost 12,000 cases. I'm here for an umbilical hernia. Biopsy. My arm, all stones. Pain on my lower right side. Inguinal. Hernia. Chronic pain in my abdomen. Gallstones. I'm not sure. I'm really waiting for him to tell me what the hell he's going to do. 
It's going to get better, I swear. So we're going to go see Tom Alden. He's a 58-year-old retired firefighter, and he has a colon cancer. Hi, I'm Dave. Hi, Dave. Tom. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you. Okay, so you had some pain which caused the CAT scan? Is that... I had some acute pain, and uh, that led to... The colonoscopy. Uh, the colonoscopy, which I should have had a long time ago. I know all about it. When I turned 50, my primary physician said, you better get a colonoscopy, which I should have had done, and I never did. I just pushed it aside, you know, for one reason or another. I wasn't really anxious to do it. Not just, just because I just, um, just didn't take the time. The good news here is that if you have to have a, a cancer, uh, colon cancer is not a bad one to have if we catch it early. And the treatment for it is surgery and um, we want to take out the section of the colon that has the tumor. We want to put you back together and hopefully find that we don't even need to do anything like chemotherapy at all. I'm a former firefighter and for 28 and a half years I was breathing some pretty bad smoke. I figured well someday I just might get cancer, you know. Call the OR? Yeah. Okay. Call the OR. All right, we're going down. Right. My patient is practically dying in front of me. He needs an operation at this very moment. That's his only chance. The heart beating, there's no pulse without compression, but there's a pulse with compression. Right. Hi, how are you? I am actually in charge today. Let's get this going. Prep him here to here, chin to knees. Being a trauma surgeon is demanding. The time commitment was a little bit insane. I don't have time to sleep. I haven't slept in a couple of days. Go. Pack. Pack, pack, pack. Keep packing, dude. More and more. You have to have a pretty strong personality to be in surgery. Can I have the knife? Right here. We can't fix everything, and I know that, but I would like to be able to fix everybody. We gotta find out what's leading to stop it. Come on. Because his bowel is like to shreds, actually, right here. So maybe if we clamp that off. He ripped his uh, small intestine in half, and all the veins and arteries feeding his uh, intestine were basically shredded. Let's see some packs. I'm just going to put some packs on yeah, his chest. Yeah, some pulse. They have done absolutely everything, like textbook, her, like heroic measures. I mean, it's just like a well-oiled machine, if this guy has any chance. Yeah. Oh, we're fibrillating. Can I have some electricity, please? All right. Are we hooked up to the defibrillator? Charge to 10. Uh, I'm ready to call it here, guys. Let's do it. Okay. All right, no more blood products. No more? We're going to have to call it. He's got no heart rhythm, even with this aortic clamp. Just kind of save him. Uh, thanks, everybody. You know, every time you see this happen, it doesn't get easier. It gets easier to, like, put it aside or, you know, put it away and kind of, like, mask it. But it still doesn't get easier. four-year-old little girl who's got blood on her brain or a stroke. Her name is Caitlin McPhee. Is she in any pain? No, I gave her some medication that takes away that pain. <laughs> She's got blood in her brain, and they don't know why. This little girl's gone through a lot. She went to renal failure um, yes. late November. She's on dialysis at home, and um, she was doing really well, and this afternoon she took a nap and woke up and couldn't feel the right side of her body. So me and my husband rushed her here, and what do you know, she's got blood in her brain. The elevator's broken, so unfortunately we've got to get to the street level and go across. Okay. Is this the only way to get to the ER? Yep.
helping me. Can Bardouche get on that case? Bardouche got to earn that case. I'm addicted. I can't help it. This is how I, like, relax myself mentally. Otherwise, I'd, like, you know, take it out on some poor, unsuspecting intern. I would get in trouble. They would send me back to sensitivity training class again. It's all about culture. They remember feeling horrible as an intern. They remember getting torn by their chief residents, and now they feel it's their job to do it to us. All right, you're in. The gallbladder fellowship. You're letting him do a gallbladder? He's my, he's my gallbladder fellow. I'm a gallbladder fellow. <laughs> I'm my gallbladder. <laughs> I wouldn't let you do my gallbladder. All right. Tell me a little bit about what happened over the past couple of days. I started feeling some soreness in my stomach, and then around 2 in the morning, I woke up in terrible pain. Okay. Um, and I haven't slept since. Mr. Fung had some imaging that revealed that his uh, gallbladder may have been acutely infected and inflamed, and so... Uh, He's on the add-on schedule for the OR today to have that removed laparoscopically. I have been on morphine trip for a while, which is good. <laughs> it's making you feel pretty good? Much better, yeah. <laughs> I'm actually really looking forward to it. Like, okay. There's a lot on the line here, in addition to this person's gallbladder. Instead of buying you one beer at the mission, I'll oh, buy you two beers. I oh. need like a steak from Morton's. That's what I hey. need. My bet with Andrew is to see if he can remove the gallbladder so cleanly that bile doesn't leak from the gallbladder, uh, which will force us to use the uh, device called the suction irrigator. No, 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 trust me. I got this gallbladder operation. It's game on. Caitlin Matthews, she's four years old. Today around 6 p.m., she uh, started complaining of a headache on the left side. Right side of weakness was brought into the hospital by her parents. We're going to make sure all her vital signs and everything are okay. Most likely, depending on what we see on the CT scan, we're going to repeat the CT scan. Okay. See if the bleeding's changed at all. Okay. And we'll have the neurosurgeons come down and look at her also. They're the doctors that specialize in that area. Okay. And she'll probably be going up to the intensive care unit. We have bilateral breath sounds. We have a nice entitled Tracy we have a sad of 100%. I'm doing 30 bikes of fentanyl. There's only so much room inside your head. All of a sudden you now have blood occupying some of that space. You end up pushing against parts of the brain so that they don't do what they're supposed to do. That's in fact what's happened to her. That's why she's not moving her right arm the way that she's supposed to. She's moving her, she's moving her left arm spontaneously and her right and left leg. She's doing just fine, Mom. She's, she's moving around a bit. That's perfectly fine. But we want to see if she's able to move. Now, that's actually helpful for us. Hold on, okay? Be my brave girl, okay? Shut up. Be my brave girl. As soon as the neurological assessment is done, we're going to go across the hall to the CAT scanner to see if there's been any change in her bleed, okay? When you leave a shift in the emergency department, you definitely go home and give your kids a big hug. She's got blood in that venture point. Yeah. The good news is that most of the things that we see, kids get better. We're about to take somebody's gallbladder out. Does everyone introduce themselves? I'm Flavio, I'm the chief resident. My team is my chief resident, Flavio, and um, my intern on the service, Andrew. Um, also known as Bardouche to the team. What's the deal? Amy, would you like to inform Flavio of our arrangement? When I used to do gallbladders as a young resident, yeah. my attendings used to put a little incentive that if they didn't have to break out the suction irrigator, then they would buy like Taco Bell, right? So, young Andrew here said that he doesn't think he's going to need to do that. So, I, okay, if you don't think you're going to have to break out the suction irrigator, then I will personally get on the Food Leader website and order steak for the team. She's wow. taking me out for steak. He does talk a lot of smack, but <laughs> we'll see how he does on this case. This is as good as it gets. You have a great team, a case that you love to do. I mean, this is, this is what it's all about. Decision 655. Oh, jeez. This one's pretty hot. There's a lot of inflammation, a lot of water in the wall, which will make the laparoscopic approach a bit more challenging. It's pretty tough. Can you introduce uh, Andrew to his hands? 
I've never used this instrument before. You want to just kind of tee it up for me? Flavio. What is this, T-ball? Flavio has two objectives this month. To eat steak and to make my life hell. Andrew, it's my job to train you. You start internship and they tear you down until you almost feel completely naked. I mean, that's their goal, is to make you a completely different person. If you can make it through internship, if you can make it through residency and fellowship, I mean, those are the people you want operating on you, the people that were able to withstand that. Now, here's the question you have to ask yourself. Is there any chance this could be the common bell? No. Why is that? Here's the gallbladder. Right. right. And then this is the duct going right to it. To going middle. nowhere else. So it's not, not going double to the backing way. into the liver. Okay. Do it. Okay, twist it. Go up. Yeah. Words of defeat. So Andrew lost the bet. The wall of the gallbladder was so inflamed that it started leaking some bile. Are you sure that he needs a wash? Yes. Just Good job, Rajesh. I'll take a Corona. Pull out the side ports. I think we're able to get the gallbladder down safely. That's the most important thing. Um, and I think the patient will do fine. He'll be able to go home tomorrow. No problems. I'm very proud of you. I thought you were going to suck a lot more than you were. Make it look pretty. Will do. My chief was just as hard on me as I am on him, and I think it's my duty to do that. But I think in the end, he's going to develop to be a good surgeon. It's just painful. It's the first time I've been in the hospital, you know. I'm a little nervous about it. Hey. How you doing? Good. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm all warmed up. You're primed? We're primed. Mr. Alden is a good example of the indestructible American male who is living his life and doing all the things he wants to do and feels like there's nothing wrong. And all of a sudden, he was confronted with the fact that he had a colon cancer. That's a nice one. Look at that. Judy came into my life when I wasn't doing too well. I had a divorce after 38 years of being married. And it was very, very difficult, extremely difficult. This island's a great place to heal. When I came down with this illness, Judy was right on top of it. I kind of knew that there was something serious before anything came back. I just had a feeling. I don't know why, but I just did. But I didn't say anything. I didn't want to be alarming. I didn't want to get it done. The worst thing about something is leading up to it. I mean, they say you got a malignant tumor and it's not spreading, so they say. You really don't know until you get in there, do you? Really? To see previous episodes of Boston Med, go to bostonmed.abcnews.com. Deep breaths, okay? Give me a deep, 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 deep breath in. How you feeling, Tom? Tom is now asleep. We are. Mr. Alden is confronted with cancer. That's tough to take for all of us, and Mr. Alden in particular. Joe, could you give me a little reverse tea? Because he's a strong firefighter. He spends time working out. Okay, let's open the stable. Then something happens that makes you think you're a little more destructible than... Maybe you thought you were. Okay, so the tumor looks to be right there. See it? Okay, let's make a little hole right there, yep. I met Tom last August, and we just hit it off. All we do is laugh all the time. He's a gentleman, and he's, he's just wonderful. I finally find the right man, and I'm hoping he's not going to leave the earth, you know? Okay, let's try those. Okay, so the reason that we do colonoscopies is to pick up colon tumors. And you'll be able to see quite easily the difference in this flat mucosa versus this cancer. So the next step in his treatment is to wait for the pathologist to look at it under the microscope, tell us if it went through the wall of the colon, take a look at the lymph nodes, and see if there's any tumor in the lymph nodes. And his chance of survival is going to depend on the results of those tests. Just talk, 
working and not on machines. She looks ten times better than when she came in. She's smiling, she's playing. She had a bleed in the brain. The bleeding has stopped. Uh, and some of the blood has actually gone down, which is why she's starting to get some of her functions back. She's a fighter, though. Hey, Dad. How you doing? Good. I didn't feel like this. So the only thing <laughs> she has is that, that, that cap in her mouth. Well, come over here, see, see me now. Does that I'm matter? Because we got the end of dental. Daddy. Yeah. Hi. Caitlin is getting an MRI of her abdomen. She's been having upper right quadrant pain, so they're trying to figure out what's causing it. She thinks that we're going to do sedation, but we're not. We're just doing tube in and then fluid. Okay. Because of the type of tests that she's having done, she is definitely going to be intubated. So just to let you know that. Why? Um, because we have to give her some uh, fluid for the test. They didn't tell me that, though. When the anesthesiologist came, they said they were going to give her IV fluids. They shouldn't have told me one thing, and then when I come down, you tell me another thing, because that just isn't cool. Misery all over again. Just, just not cool a with it. Picture of her stomach. She's going to be miserable. I don't want anything done until we speak with the anesthesiologist and know exactly what's happening to my child. Mom is very, very upset. Apparently, whoever went and, and prepared them for anesthesia on Friday told her that she wasn't going to be intubated. Drama. Drama children's. I'm on my way now to see one of my patients that I'm taking to the OR today. No, she's fine. <laughs> you can hold he it. just loves being held. Oh, yeah. He's adorable. Look. <laughs> She's a 21-year-old who had a cesarean section 10 days ago. Unfortunately, she developed a severe infection. My stitches had given out, so when I was in the bathroom, I just started bleeding all over the floor. Today, I'm going to do my best to make sure it's all cleaned out so that she can go home and take care of her baby. Oh, another baby. I'm certain that if I had more time, I would go out and meet people and, you know, fall in love and get married and have children. I've decided to not just look at the online dating sites that I'm registered to, that I'm going to actually do something about it and go on a date. I know how men think. I know what they want. <laughs> yeah. Lucas is one of my best friends. Do you want like a stable relationship? God, no. Why would I want something like that? You curious? No, I mean, come on, yes, of course, but like, I was with somebody for a long time. <laughs> we were engaged, and we had the wedding all planned, and I caught him cheating on me, so I broke off the wedding. All right, so headline. Something that, like, like a guy will look at it and be like, hmm, let's see what this girl has. Brain like a, <laughs> you know, like a trauma surgeon, body like a rock star. <laughs> Okay. Want to be my groupie? About that? Yeah. Want to be my groupie? Yeah, let's put that. <laughs> Want to hook up in my call room? Oh, come on. You can't put that. Need an anatomy lesson? <laughs> <laughs> All right. This, you don't like that? This is a bad idea. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm definitely back to my old self. I'm not looking to marry anybody right now. I just want to start off dating. Nobody prepared us for this beforehand. But she's going to wake up with a tumor in her throat. She's going to be traumatized all over again. Nobody even told us. I think she's upset because she just feels confused and that whoever consented her for an anesthesia probably said the wrong things. So you can imagine <clears throat> having her child as sick as her child is and then all of a sudden Expecting one thing and then, you know, 10 minutes before we're ready to do the scan, you get a whole different picture. I'm sorry, but I'm still paying hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars for this. Hey, how are you? How are we doing? I'm Bill Sparks. Hi. I'm one of the attending anesthesiologists. I apologize for the confusion today. Um, Caitlin was put on the schedule 
in order to take a look at a specific area of the abdomen to try to identify what is causing her pain. Okay. In order to get good pictures, she can't breathe. We stop her breathing during periods of the scan. We weren't even told that. People should have come talk to us. Yeah. You know, we could have had time to research it on the... We just sit around in the room and get nothing done but the, the kids in pain. We get down here 20 minutes before the procedure and we get, like, hit with, like, a blow yeah. of information. The We're communication is non-existent in this hospital, and I don't understand that. It really it's bad. You got four or five different modules within the hospital trying to come up with a plan, and it just didn't get communicated well. There's no reason for you not to know what's going on with Kaylin. It's not fair to Kaylin, it's not fair to you, but at the end of the day, in the next few days, either today or the next few days, we'll be doing the study. I'm gonna let you guys talk about it. If it was more of a life-threatening situation, I would say, you know what, we really need to go. We're not there. She's fine, she's stable, she's got some pain issues. You know, let's make sure that you guys are comfortable with everything. Okay. Okay? Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. We gotta go through it at some point. I'm gonna go through it now or in three days from now. Then we'll get it over with. trying to figure out what's wrong with her. They were trying to make her well. But now it's like, they don't even know what to do anymore. And it's just like, why am I here? Caitlin's been in the hospital for six weeks. The next step is to get her home. So we've, we've done all the studies. We're not gonna do anything new. Her pain's under control. Everything's moving in the right direction. Mom has learned how to do dialysis at home so that Caitlin can get the treatment she needs. Dr. Harvey thinks she would benefit for extra dialysis. That was something that people are feeling pretty intense about right now. I know she needs the dialysis a minimum of 10 hours, but to get her on for 12 hours now is gonna be even more challenging. She's gonna get dialysis every day. She's gonna get a dozen medications. She's gonna get some injections. She's gonna get physical therapy. Think about yourself. How would you handle all these things? So this is a very daunting task. I mean, right. I'm responsible for so freaking much. No, Paralysis, rehab, doctor's appointments. I set the machine up. I get the doctor's appointments. I haven't seen my son in a month. I can barely get her on for 10 hours. They don't even know if this is going to work, but my life's going to get turned upside down. Yes, it's a huge, huge, huge undertaking that you have going. But if there's one person on this planet who can do it, it is you, because you are fantastic when it comes to taking care of your daughter. It's like I can't breathe. And I'm trying to hold it together because it's not her fault. The anger is very real and very valid. Um, when you're sitting there, there's not much you can do as a caregiver besides just try and absorb a little bit of it and to not be, not to take it personally in any way, shape, or form and to hope that it in some way helps her move forward. It's very, very, very normal to feel like you do. You do so much and you do it well. You do it very well. So that is why you're gonna be able to handle bringing her home and doing it again. I just want to get out of this goddamn hospital. Hello? Yo. Yo, what's up? Can you cover me tonight? What's going on? I got a date. You got a date? You <laughs> don't sound so surprised. Why do you sound so surprised? Every day yeah, became like... another sad day. Okay. 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 I'm going out with somebody I met last week. Tonight will be our first real date. Would you like to get up and dance tonight? No. <laughs> Maybe after my beer. <laughs> I will. I took one lesson. Did you really? How'd it go? Not very well. No? Did I tell you that I got commissioned today? You didn't. <laughs> you get a commission as what? The captain in the United States Armory Resource. <laughs> You weren't busy enough with the... Oh, I, I mean, I know, right? Because I just thought that the one day off or two days off I have, you know, during the month that I should be doing something productive. Well, that's awesome. 
and he used to be in the Marines, so he's very supportive. We just automatically have something in common. I'm attracted to him. We'll see where it goes. <laughs> If your operations go well, the patient should look, even on the first post-op day, kind of like they haven't had an operation. How you feeling? I uh, felt very, very weak. That's why I'm sleeping. I'm extremely weak. It's still a big operation yesterday, you know. Right. It's possible you could sneak home tomorrow night. We'll see how you do. Really? Yeah, well, that way you wouldn't have to sleep in our bed tomorrow night. You ever sleep on a hose bed in a fire truck? No, it doesn't sound good. It's right. worse than this. All right, looking good. Okay. Hang in there. We'll see you, all right? Okay. So Tom's doing really well. Everything for him now hinges on that pathology report. If the cancer has spread to the lymph nodes, his tumor is going to be much harder for him to beat. There she is. What do you got? It's just some magazines. Magazines. This is Does who I remind her of. <laughs> if that doesn't work for you, it's probably closer to the guy on the back. This guy, great hair, slight paunch, real cool dude, you know what I mean? You look way better. Oh, rosy, huh? Your, nice, your cheeks are rosy. Pink, you huh? look good last night, but you look even more tremendous today. Are you gonna miss me like I miss you? You're gonna think of me, get a little blue. I haven't, like, sat down since, like, 6 o'clock this morning. I don't even know what time it is right now. My mom referred to me a couple times as Hurricane Amy. Because the wake I leave behind me of men. How'd you know we just got home? I wanted to uh, let you know that my date went, went great. And I only talked about blood and necrotizing infections once. So it was cool. I, I kind of reminded myself to kind of shut up. <laughs> I know you think you're going to get that. I think so, yeah. To see additional scenes from Boston Med, go to bostonmed.abcnews.com. I know I'm going to forget something big. The question is, what am I going to forget? This is crazy, right? I just got out of work, and I really haven't packed. So, Egypt. My parents both came here from Egypt. I want to go back and I sort of want to figure out where I came from. I'm paying the price now because I'm post-call, haven't slept in about 30 hours, and I feel like complete ass. But it's all going to be worth it because I got 10 hours to sleep on uh, Egypt Air. Um, I'm so thrilled right now. I'm on my way to the airport, and before you know it, I'll be in Cairo. At least for a week, I'll be in paradise. Too soon, the light that's within your eyes will hear the call. We just got the results back on Mr. Alden, and unfortunately, he has uh, three of 14 nodes positive for cancer, and because of that, he's going to need chemotherapy. I was thinking of going out and swinging at a golf club. Oh. Undo all your stitches. Then your jeans will cut into the incision. I'll ask the doctor's advice. Mm. <laughs> so uh, this isn't the best news, and it's definitely not the news that he wanted to hear. Hey, guys. Hey. hey. So the pathology report's back. And this cancer did not go all the way through the wall which is good news. Um, but three of the 14 nodes were positive yeah. for tumor, okay? Uh -huh. So what that means is that it spread into those lymph nodes right near the tumor, all right? right? Hopefully we got that out. It does translate, though, into most likely needing chemotherapy. Really? Wow. Obviously, nobody wants to hear that. No. Nor do I want to tell you that. But I think you have to look at how this thing has gone. You know, you had an operation. The operation right. went really well. You're doing really well. And you jumped the first hurdle. And yeah. the tumor's out. Yeah. And now what we need to do is do the second hurdle, which is do the belt and the suspenders. Make sure our pants right. don't fall down, right? 
You know, I, I really like being a surgeon. I help a lot of people. I have fun doing it. But ultimately, the thing that will make me stop is the complications, is the problems, is the bad outcomes. Because ultimately, that'll drive me crazy. is my cousin. We've gotten pretty close, and neither of us speak Arabic, so we're totally screwed. You're not allowed to spoil us. For the first time, we just met two of my female cousins on my mom's side. Just because you guys speak the language and we don't. We're going to need uh, your help negotiating. <laughs> The, the fake Rolex watches. How much? This is for 25. Yeah, 100 pages. 180 is too much. What yeah. can you do? It's too much. I'll tell you what. I'll give you. I'll give you 100 for it. Okay. All right. Well, it's a nice watch. I don't I actually don't even really need a watch. I don't even need a watch, so it's not a big deal. I'll give you 100 for it. 125 and you got small profit. Uh, I'll give you the 125, just adjust it. No, no problem. Hey, congratulations. I'm the new owner of a fake Rolex. This is the best thing you have. I think so. Let me see. I don't ever remember like, meeting uh, you guys. Did I no, meet no, you no, too? No, no. When you're a surgical resident and people are dying, it makes you think, you know, I'm running out of time to know my family. You're supposed to be a doctor. I am a doctor. I'm not supposed to be a doctor. <laughs> so you guys are spoiling me by giving me a hard time? <laughs> I had to shoot you down for the for the date that you wanted to go on. But I just don't think it's a good idea. We are colleagues. <laughs> wait, wait, wake up. You're dreaming again. Wake up. I didn't realize I had this much stuff until I started packing this morning. Where are you going to put me? Where are you going to put you? We're well, leaving you here. You're going right on top. You have the best present. I'm excited that I can have my freedom again, but it's going to be a lot of responsibility to watch her. Definitely going to be a challenge to go home. I think she's going to get a lot better. Uh, children are very resilient. Bye, Bye, Bye Caitlin. Oh, where's the kid? <laughs> That's important. The goal is trying to get her right side moving again. She's made good progress. Tell you, honey, you're going to sleep all the way home, I guarantee it. I'm sure her mom and her father are going to figure out how to do this. It just needs to get done. Hi, Muncie. I am involved in the most important part of someone's life, their entire life. I do my best to make the outcomes perfect, but you can't always do it, but you try. Uh, you get the biggest one of the day. Oh, oh, oh. Nice job. Oh. All the way in. Judy, I'll rake and you plant. Okay. How's that? <laughs> my yard was just waiting for Tom to arrive. I'm just going to rake it back. Okay. I feel great. I do. I feel fantastic. Dr. Berger caught it just in time. And I've been off of chemo five months. Before Easter, I asked Judy to marry me. So we're going to be married in the fall, if not sooner. Before, I was thinking death. Now I'm thinking living. And now what am I going to do for the rest of my life? <laughs> Next on Boston.
Austin Mac. Taking a piece of a person and keeping someone else alive. What else could there be in terms of a, a legacy? She said, we want to take, and she went like this. I saw the patient within hours after his accident. I fell onto the third rail. The center of the face is all gone. We're going to perform only the second face transplant ever. We're going into the unknown here. We're getting close. It's absolutely amazing. I don't think his wife will recognize him. He had a perfect little oval face. My dad was ready to accept any outcome. Congratulations. Thank you. Has he seen himself yet? He has not seen himself yet. There's the mirror. Thank you.